Good day and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. As you know, we've got amazing content coming to you live every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwakumalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's live every evening from Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. And of course, Mbali comes to your screens with the Farming Podcast at 8 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday evening. And, of course, me, I come to your screens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. That's on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And last but not least, Chad Viveros tours Mzanzi Johannesburg from Danefern Golf Estate all the way to Sant and CBD. Looks at amazing mansions and houses. That's Chad Viveros with the Home Shopper Show. That's every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. And, guys, remember, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Also, if you have a story to share, let us know. Slide in our DMs. We're waiting for you, but without further ado adieu. Nomsa's with me this evening. And guys, I need you to sit back this evening <laughs> because today's show, you know, we're talking about everything from starting your property journey at a very young age to what is a property portfolio specialist. <laughs> Nomsa Klabati. Good day. Good day. How are you? I am doing <laughs> so well, Estia. How are you? I'm well. You, you said you were a little bit nervous. Why? Uh, I think that pressure to be right. Uh, oh, yeah? Because, you know, it's a lot of... Um, it's a lot of people who tune in mm. and this is advice that just everyday South Africans are following. Mm. You know the economy that we're living in, so yeah. we need to give them uh, content that is... Yeah. You yeah. know, so you just went deep. <laughs> <laughs> the show started like this. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think not so much, I don't want to put you under pressure, not so much about being right, um, because I believe that you know, every lesson that we learn or every a little bit of input that you give us is just new knowledge. Um, you know, there's something you know that I, I don't even know. Um, and just to be in, in your space, you know, it's such a privilege to learn from you. Thank because, you. no, there's things you know that I don't even, haven't even come across ever. And there are things that you know that right. I don't know. And I think Vice that's versa, just the yeah. point of exchanging information mm. and learning from each other. Mm. The man who knows, he knows, knows, he knows nothing at all. Exactly. Oh, I like that. I used to <laughs> say that. I want to talk about, um, like I said, I even introduced you and I said you've got, an in, you got into property at a very young age. And, you know, 21, right? That's when you started. What was your main influence? So I started real estate at 19. Mm -hmm. And how that happened was I was running a hair business. Uh -huh and it wasn't doing very well and I needed money to pump into it. And I had varsity as well, right. and I'm taking care of myself. And I interned at a very amazing company. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, the boss was like, don't you want to just take over this whole office? Oh, wow. I am, I'm tired. And I was like, do you know, do you know that I have no experience? I, you don't even know me. Yeah. He's like, no, there's something about you. Oh, wow. Just do your thing, let's see. Mm -hmm. And. I really had fun running that office mm -hmm. until I had to move from the northwest to a different province. Right. And from that, I also ran somebody else's company mm. and I ran it by myself. I think that's when people started noticing who Namsa was and this is when I was 21 now. Oh, wow. And it was really, it was really an eye opener because from a young age, I knew I wanted to get into real estate, yeah. but there aren't, there isn't enough information mm. about how to get into it, how to make a success out of it. And luckily, I wasn't under that much pressure to provide for family and and and. Right. I was just having fun. I was yeah. doing my thing. Oh, you want me to run your company? Let's do sure, it. Yeah. You know. So that's how my wow. journey started. That's amazing because I mean, you know, jumping into these big opportunities. But you know what you did. You took an opportunity. Absolutely. You did what a lot of people are afraid to do. Thank you. And look at where you are now. <laughs> so, I mean, you're a property portfolio specialist. What exactly is it that you do, especially for our viewers who have no idea what that is? So, I do exactly what a real estate agent does. Yeah. The difference between what I, the service I would give you and what a real estate agent would do is that um, they think, do you know what? let's just make the sale, let's close this deal. Mm -hmm. I cannot afford to think like that. Mm. I need to know why you're making this purchase and how long do you want to keep this purchase for? What, what are your current needs? Yeah. So if it's an investment, uh, I need to make sure that this property would fit well into the portfolio that you're trying to build. Yeah. Um, so it's important for me to think about what your needs are. If this particular property that you're buying fits into that portfolio mm. and how I can help you build your legacy, build wealth, um, 
create an income stream for yourself yeah you know that makes mm. sense is it a is it a good investment um you know so what kind of questions would you ask them in your line of work? so um so the kind of questions that i'd ask you if you're coming to me for real estate first of all is this a primary residence or is it an investment property yeah. if it's a primary residence what lifestyle are you currently leading mm -hmm. and what environment or suburb or town would suit that lifestyle right. what kind of neighbors do you need etc mm. and if it's a if it's an investment property i want to know um how much you, you want to rent this out for mm. and if those people in that area need that or if they would buy into a five thousand rand rental or twenty thousand rand rental yeah and then we make decisions based off of that would you as nomsa today be able to answer the questions you ask your clients for yourself could you Absolutely. answer them? Absolutely. So how far are you within your journey of building your property portfolio? <laughs> I am quite uh, deep in. Ah. <laughs> it's not the easiest uh, mm. journey to be in. Yeah. And, you know, we look at it outside and we think, oh, my goodness, she owns that and that and that. But really, mm. it's, it's, it's really challenging if you do not know what you're doing, if you do not have anybody that you're talking to. It's, it's, yeah. really, it's really not an easy journey. What are some of those challenges, though? Because, I mean, a lot of the times we hear about the nice things. We hear yeah. about how amazing it is that, you know, you've invested in this massive development or you've invested in five properties. And yes, we, we, we hear about a little bit of challenges, right? Yeah. But I want to get to, like, the raw part of it, like, the truth. What is so challenging, like, currently with you, if, if you don't mind sharing? So, what is challenging with me currently late rent payments mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not because my clients don't have money right. it's just that oh do you know what i'll just <sighs> see this on the third oh, and wow. the bank wants their money on the first because yeah. that was the arrangement that was made yeah. uh rates and taxes need to be paid on the first you know there's so many things mm. that go into um managing a property uh, an investment right that we do not uh, take into consideration yeah, yeah. when going into it but there are more perks than there are obviously the you more know, pros than cons, cons. Yeah. absolutely so i complain my, my mother always listens to me complain about simple mm. things like you know then they were drunk and then <laughs> i need to call somebody at 11 p.m and then at the end of the month she's like so can i have your card <laughs> you know and that's what she sees you know mm. it's fun for her and really those are the perks of it it's yeah. really it's freeing yeah. yeah let's talk about the, i like that that you use the word freeing because mm. free is 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 you know it's very it, it takes a while for us to get to that point in our life to be yeah. entirely free but let's talk about financial freedom how has that journey towards financial freedom been for you or are you there <laughs> <laughs> are you there <laughs> i like how these questions are just <laughs> so um i think that financial freedom first of all is a mindset yeah I've seen clients that make a million rand a month still feel like they're strapped for cash. Right. I do think that it starts firstly in your mind and then you start to manage your mm -hmm. cash flow. Um, when I first started making money, I there were no goals. I'd just, I'd just buy whatever I can get oh, my wow. hands on and as quickly as I can go through the money, let's do it. Oh, wow. But I got to a point where it's like, no, 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 no. This mm. is not how this is supposed to work. Mm. You're not supposed to be feeling like this on the 28th. Right. Because your lifestyle does not even require that much. Right. What are you doing? Right. So we don't really think about um, the fact that we don't need all of these things that mm. we're, we're buying, that we're gathering, mm. all these purses and shoes. Really, we don't need all of them. Yeah. So it's, it just makes sense that you have a budget set every month this goes quiet, towards yeah. my shoe addiction. This mm. goes towards lunching with the girls. This is for, you know, rent, water, right. whatever it is. But mm. it's important to manage your finances and do not operate from uh, a mindset that is limited. What was one of your addictions? Like, what was one of your lifestyle changes that was so hard to change? <laughs> when you, Because budgeting is difficult, girl. Let me tell you. <laughs> There are things where you're like, um, no, I can only spend this much. Yeah. But then, you know, you get to that time and you're like, but I really want to have lunch with the girls. <laughs> just so let me just use from the shoe budget and have lunch. Yeah. Like, yeah. what was the hardest 
lifestyle change for you to make with, within your budget, setting out your budget? I'm going to be dead honest. Mm -hmm. My mother. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was... The, really? That is my most expensive um, <laughs> asset. <laughs> what do you call it? And I'm not, I'm not very, I'm not very uh, materialistic in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, I want a Louis purse. Right. Or I want to take a trip to Dubai next week. Mm. No. You know, I'm... Uh, I'm impressed by very simple things. Okay. But saying no to family, mm. that is the hard part. That is the part where, you know, their budget is exhausted mm. and you, and you, and everything is a need. Everything is a need. This is you true. Know, I, I saw the stress. That that dress is a need. Mm. Just give it. Just give it to her. <laughs> That's very so, true. So so I've had to really sit down with myself and hard, and, and have a hard talk. You can't allow people who do not plan their lives mm. to come in and, and rearrange you. yours. Mm. It's important for you to stand firm mm. on those boundaries and say no. This is where it ends. No, no, so I'd like to go deeper into black tax, right? It's a pandemic on its own. And, um, you know, it's very, you, you sort of gave a solution when you spoke about setting boundaries. And that gets really hard when it's your mom or your grandma, right? Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about, I want to go a little bit deeper. And maybe you don't have the answer, but let's, let's chat about how do we as young people of color in South Africa who property is our, our goal now. I mean, everyone in my circles is talking about property. We're all ready to invest in property. But coming with investment comes more money. Yeah. With more money, there's more things. There's a higher that, tax. Exactly. <laughs> the, the tax. The yeah. tax. Yeah. How how do we deal with that? How do we fix that situation? That pandemic of black tax. Is it fixable? I think, I'm not sure if it's fixable. Mm. I always try and plan. So. I'm all about creating legacies. Mm -hmm. When I talk about or plan the legacy, I think about the people after me. So my of siblings, course. their kids, our kids, the yeah. family that I'm going to create with my future husband, and, and, and. Yeah. And so it's important to have those boundaries nonetheless. I would say, and I've seen a few of my clients put these mm -hmm. uh, systems in place. Mm -hmm. what, what are their needs? So with you, right. you have your job and you have a set salary. Mm -hmm. Your boss does not give you more money because you need to an extra pair of shoes. Right. So it's important to put systems in place and say, what are your needs? Mm. If they are starving, it makes sense. You need to take care of them. You need to buy food. You need to give uh, money for transport and and and. Mm. But beyond that, mm. be, you know, luxuries that you expose yourself to, and they see that you're living that life. That's for you. Yeah. You need to pour from a full cup, mm. and that's what has worked for me all along. I realized when I said no the first time that actually they can cope. Yeah. I can do this again. Yeah. And I tried to say no again and again and again, mm. and eventually they got to realize, okay, this is where it stops with Namsi exactly. because this is what she's creating. Yeah. And. I, I had to have a hard talk with myself because if I do not set those boundaries, mm. I will be them 20 years from now oh, and wow. my kids will have to deal with the oh. same thing that I'm dealing with. Mm. So it's either the spark stops here or, or it's, it becomes a generational curse. Absolutely. So we need to break those things. Oh, absolutely. wow. No, wait, I'm moved. Um, I, because it, it gets, it's really difficult and yeah. I love what you're saying because these are solutions and I think it's just, it's not, and I think saying no has become mm. very difficult for our generation. Yeah, absolutely. But I think what's so important to take note of is how we do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I yeah. think there's a method to this, to this madness and to this pandemic that's been left. Mm. And how are we planning on breaking these generational curses? Absolutely. Um, instead of setting more, you yeah. know, or yeah. adding to these curses. Yeah, because at some point we need it needs to end somewhere yeah. and we know better now we're living in an internet this show is on the internet right we know so much more mm. i think it's important that it stops here mm. yeah. and we're getting so much more information on the daily absolutely. you know absolutely. um i love that wow thank you thank for you. that i like that we discussed about it there's, there's there's no and i feel that um you know figure out what works for you and and your family and like you said you get a set amount at the end of every month mm. you know, taking care of our family is definitely part of our it falls on our needs list because you know they've done certain things to provide and cater for us to go to amazing schools and to 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 lay the foundation or the ground foundation so that we can then start creating the generational wealth and you know what I spoke to a guest um, 
a while back and, and we, he, he said something so amazing, which is something we need to take note of is that it's a first for a lot of us. Yeah. It's the, we're the first people to do yeah. certain things. We're the first to go to university, the first to do a lot of things. Yeah. So, but how do we continue to be the first and, and to create still. generational wealth and still take, take care, care of mm. what we're leaving behind? Mm. Earlier on, we spoke about clients who have put systems in place right. to um, mitigate or take responsibility for their families. I think with each family is a different plan mm. and once we have a vision of how we're going to handle what's going on here right. and what we're going to do moving forward then you know that's the way to do it mm. i think um with my family i had to look at them and say okay so they're okay mm. until here and this is where i need to chip in right i don't come from a poor family mm. and i know a lot of people do mm. um with 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 my family it's not food and lights right. you know it's the extras you know yeah. my my younger sister's school fees mm. or uh somebody couldn't make rates and taxes this month, month yeah. but it's 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 not um as big as right. you know what, what other others, people would yeah. be facing but mm. i do think that it's important to have a set budget every month yeah and say um we cannot stay here Right. This is how we move forward and right. we take care of that first mm. and then we say um, this is where I can chip in here mm. because at the end of the day, particularly with my family, they're not going to die right. if I can't. Mm. But the, my siblings or a generation after that could suffer because of decisions yeah. that I've made right now. True. So for me it was important to look at that mm. and just be frank about it and say exactly. they can't live like this with everything that I know, with everything that I've built, with everything that right. I am building. Mm. So I like that. Yeah. I also wanted to find out from you because you, you, you know, getting into property portfolio management and choosing the specific path, right? Yeah. Did you see a problem? Um, and and because I, I feel like having a property portfolio manager, right, someone mm. who is a need. Yeah, honestly, it is uh, amongst friends, amongst people in our country. Just yeah. you know, yeah. Did you see an issue? Um, with uh, people around you? Do you? Did you see that your job is actually, need, they need you? So the reason why I got into mm. the work that I got into mm. is in order for us to live wholesome lives, mm. we need to build beautiful communities. Right. We need to go home and be happy to be there. Mm. The reason why, you know, we are in just very bad situations is really at the core right how we're living the lifestyles that we lead our homes you know mm. just simple things you know a, a tenant yeah is coming home and the house is not painted mm. windows are cracked mm. tiles are cracked and it's my job to speak to an owner and say this is this is very there's no dignity right. in how this tenant is living. Yeah. And it's important for you to give them dignity so they can thrive in their daily lives. Yeah. And I think that's, that's why I got into it deeper, even with um, my higher end clients, mm -hmm. because they are the ones that are responsible for building for the lower to middle class. Right. And if they build, you know, just small square Little, rooms yeah, for, for walls. people to live yeah. there. It's, it's not conducive. Mm. That person cannot be their best. Mm. They need, you know, bathroom facilities that mm. are beautiful as well. They need good paints. They need beautiful tiles. Mm. They need trees. Yeah. You know? And we, we, I think as a country, we're just so comfortable with living in, me in mediocrity that mm. it's, it's become okay mm. to live in a bad space. True. And we can't have that anymore. I love that you said trees, because if you look at spaces we come from, there's no greenery. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's something I've never ever thought about because it's yeah. become such a norm. Yeah. You know, you just assume that this is what it is and this is what you deserve. Yeah. Because the people before you had it and the people who are, you mm. know, who look like you have it. So, and that's, I think, to get out of, again, it's a mindset. Absolutely. To get out of that mindset, to do something uh, that takes you away from that, just also to know that you deserve better. 
absolutely and you know? when you know that you deserve better you give better you do better exactly everything around you you make it beautiful mm. yeah i like that i really do i see why you got into being a portfolio specialist and i and i think um you i think you yeah the first portfolio specialist i've spoken to which is amazing i did my own research on on you know what it is that you guys what what it is that you do and like i said i definitely think it's a necessity but now what if i can't afford your services if you can afford to keep a property, you can afford my services. Uh, I charge 10% okay. of uh, yeah. how much ever you're getting per month. Mm. So even if you're getting 5,000 rands, that's 500 rands per month for someone to make sure to be your eyes, to be your ears, mm. to make sure that the space is amazing exactly yeah i you know you spoke about you you want to continue making investors thrive or you yeah. want to continue even just um and for me i think the word investors automatically when we hear it we assume that you've got ten thousand properties around johannesburg yeah which is not the case you know yeah. just one or two or three is even um, a young investor yeah. um so how do you want to how are you planning on helping us as young investors continue to thrive so i think the first and foremost is the kind of investments that we're making. Mm. I see a lot of um, uh, aspiring investors send me the craziest properties and call them investments. Oh, wow. If you are making an investment, first of all, it has to be uh, it has to be cash flow positive. Yeah. That's first and foremost. Mm. You can't come to me with the property and you're paying 10,000 rands mortgage and your tenant is paying you 11,000 rands. You're paying 3,000 rands that? on rates and taxes. And, 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 yeah. and, you know, so it cannot take from you first month. It needs to give. Mm. You need to be building onto that. You can't wait 20 years yeah, to, to finally see, to reap what you, yeah. Absolutely. You, so that's the first thing for me. Mm. What are you buying? Mm. So talk to me about that and see if the strategy that you have makes sense right. or if we need to devise a new one. Mm. And I think, um, with, with saying that you know investors need to thrive and a lot of us doing it for the first time because you're there to help us even if this is our first time absolutely which is amazing right so because a lot of young people like us and it's amazing that we're doing this we are investing in property yeah we are not afraid to yeah. but how do we determine or figure out what cash positive is a lot of us don't even know what that term um how to to see ROI, how to see the return on investment immediately, you know? Yeah. Give us maybe some tips on how we can um, identify that this property or this investment is going to be cash positive. So first of all, if it does have a tenant, how much is the tenant pay? Mm. And then all of the expenses minus from that. Mm. So if your tenant is paying 10,000 rands, how much is your mortgage? Rates, taxes, water, mm. sewer, uh, a property manager, and just everything else so that's how you determine if it's cash flow positive right if it does not if there isn't any money left over or if there's a there's a minus left over at there's the end of issue. that that's a cash flow negative mm -hmm. stay away from it it is not an investment mm. actually it's a liability because yeah. properties can also be, be liabilities, liabilities. Yeah. yeah and that's actually something that we don't talk about often Absolutely. you know um and i don't i don't always look at uh, it being a mistake but mm. I, I feel like um, oh, this is what I wanted to find out from you, right? Is it easy for first-time investors mm -hmm. to pull out of a deal? Yes, immediately. Put it back on the market. Yeah. <laughs> somebody will sell it, somebody will buy it for mm. purposes not even that you were thinking of. Mm. So it is very, very possible. And I think we, we get so scared because we've, we've given so much mm. and we, it's so hard for us to, just to let go of it immediately. I think that's the problem with a lot of people. Mm. You cannot tie emotions into to any investment. investment. You cannot tie emotions into the decisions that you're making. Mm. It can never be an emotional decision. Mm. I don't care if it's got the pillars that you're your mom's house had <laughs> you need to let it go mm. if if you need to let it go mm. and that's just that oh wow yeah um and how how do you separate emotion from your investment what is one of your maybe methods that you <laughs> use um i don't think i've ever had a problem with that oh really no uh the thing about money is that it's it, it flows mm. I can't I can't feel anything about it. I think mm. that's why I'm able to let go and welcome money very quickly into my space. I can't I can't think about how I'm mm. feeling about this 200 rand note. Mm. It's been passed around 50 so million times. times before me and it will still be passed around mm. after me. So it's just making sure that you are participating in the economy mm. and participation means that you're 
you're evolving exactly you're making decisions every day you're changing mm. What do I need to do today to get to the me that I want to be tomorrow? tomorrow. And you're doing that. Mm. And I think this thing, money, we, we worship it too much, I yeah. think. And I love, because you're reminding me of something someone else taught me a few days ago, right? That you're right, money comes and it goes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you make this money all the time. And, yeah. But also, there's this thing attached to saving and mm. saving in the bank that, you know, that our parents taught us all these years. Yeah. What is your <laughs> thoughts on that? Um... <laughs> does Warren Buffett have savings <laughs> or does he have cash flow yeah they have cash flow mm. the point is to make enough money to gain access to the kind of lifestyle that you, you want. need yeah and to make sure that that is evolving that's mm. just the point of it do I have access right now mm. yes how do I gain more access mm. wealthy people leverage debt to gain access to that lifestyle mm. to create wealth yeah and poor people just buy things and are emotionally attached to things and and it's this more than imposter syndrome mm. it's also this need to just i don't know how to explain it mm -mm. but we just we're okay with staying here yeah we're and, settling, and, and we're afraid of what the future holds or what we could do yeah. what is different we need to let go of what we've been taught yeah. and be able to embrace you that's know, what's newness. so tricky is unlearning yeah and you're right we're so okay with being here yeah and then once we're here like there's no it is scary yeah, yeah. i mean Deaths. who do you know that has a three million rand property now yeah. yeah it's okay if it's you mm. it's okay if it's you because you need to understand that your life mm. determines everybody that's around you they look at that and they think Oh, this is possible because Esther could exactly. do it. Exactly. Oh, this is not possible because look at where she's been. Mm. Look at who she's touched. But she still is exactly. not where we thought mm. she'd be. So clearly this is normal and clearly this is right. Fine. You know, so we, we need to get out of it. It's more than just about us. Exactly. On that note of, you know, people being so stagnant and s staying in this one space, yeah. how do you define success? So success for me... It's actually, I don't think it's what people think it is. Mm -hmm. Success for me is an overall beautiful life mm. where I'm thriving, not just at work. Mm. I'm thriving in family, in love, in health. Su success for me is living disease free. Right. It's being able to meet up with my girls and they're all okay. Mm. You know, being able to buy flowers and take them to my mother and mm. she can smell them because she's still alive. Mm. That is what success is for me, just a wholesome life. Mm. Yeah. And what kind of work do you need to put in to get that, to reach that? I think first of all we need to get out of limited mindsets. Mm -hmm. We need to get out of mindsets that do not allow for new opportunities to present themselves mm. and we need to get out of that fear yeah. of staying where we are. Um, I think that's the first thing and after your mindset you need to look at what you're putting into your body. Right. What are you eating yeah. and what is that doing for you? What mm. chemicals are you, you know, I, I always, I, I follow this lady on Instagram she always tells me the front is for advertising, the back is for health. <laughs> now every time I buy something. yeah. Advertising may be good, but what's, what's at, at the, the back? back? Mm. If it's all these chemicals, what is that doing to me? Mm. And the moment we can get rid of chemicals and dirt in our bodies, we can think better. Yeah. We can, we, we'll speak more politely. Mm. We'll be happier, mm. you know? So how do we get out of that and into a, diff yeah. a better you? And I think what's so important and we hear this a lot it's not only the literal food that you eat it's also the other things you are feeding yourself what are you yeah. feeding your mind yeah what are you feeding your soul you yeah. know because all of this will then take us to because i feel like you define success um i know you said wholesome life but i also what i heard in that was it's 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 a level of um there's a word like just pure joy uh there's a word Aesthetic. um Ecstasy. Gosh, it starts with an E though. But there's a word Aesthetic. of just, yeah, I think just just being, is. you know, so so and humbly and pure. Just everything was just like Excellent. you said, wholesome. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And to get there, you're right. There's a certain amount of, of work that we need to put in. Absolutely. Um, Nomsa, because of time, you know, I feel like. <laughs> 
We can just keep sitting. I mean, we're in Santon. <laughs> Two of you is watching. We are in Santon Hotel Apartments given to us by properties.com, an absolutely amazing apartment. This is where we are. Our views are spectacular. And I'm yeah. sitting with Nomsa this afternoon. Before we even finish our show, I have a little game that I want to play with you, right? So what this entails is um, I'm going to show you a few houses in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg. Okay. And you are going to guess the price range. OK. <laughs> if you get them right, you get a PlayStation 5. I'm joking. We have <laughs> nothing to give you. <laughs> this is just for fun, for vibes. Okay. So we're just doing it for vibes. So the first house, I'm just going to let it load quickly. So you watch like a minute, not even a minute. Watch the property and see. And the only clue I'll give you is the suburb. Okay, suburb. What am I guessing? The price range. Okay. Uh... You don't get sound. Oh, I don't get sound? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, triple volume. Mm. This is, wow. This is gorgeous, first of all. Hmm. This is definitely in Santon. Is this in Morningside? Let me give you the area. <laughs> Uh, oh, you want to watch, watch a little more? Okay, wait, I'm, I'm guessing the price range. Price range for this. Let me give you the area and the amount of bedrooms. That's the only okay. clues I'm going to give you, okay? okay? So you've seen enough. I've seen that property. Okay. Amount of bedrooms, that's how <laughs> you. Oh, you're very close. Not morning, sir. It's Bryanston. Okay. Uh, guys. Is it 12 million? Very close. It's eleven. Oh, wow! <laughs> what did you do? How did you get that? How I did don't you? Know. How did you just know. guess that? I don't know. I just looked at it and thought this may be twelve million. Must be twelve. Okay. The next one I'm giving you is in Benmore Gardens, okay. uh, also around Johannesburg, also right? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna let you tour through that. Okay. There was even a nice evening shoot. Look at you guys Ooh, this is going gorgeous. out in the evening. Oh, this is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, this is stunning. This is... And you want to get into luxury property, eh? How many bed... Yes, I'm getting into luxury. I've already started. Nice. So, we'll see how it goes. Um, hmm. How, wow. Benmore Gardens. Do you need the bedrooms? Benmore Gardens. Yes, please. Okay, let me give it to you. I'm going to need that, though. Jacuzzi. Oh, stunning. <laughs> this is... Whew, it's a tricky one. Okay, let me give you the bedrooms and then you guess. Okay. You're the only guest that gets to keep it for longer than a minute. <laughs> That's only because I like you. Okay, this one. Four bedrooms. I'll tell you. Yeah, four story mansion in Benmore Gardens. Uh, 18 million. Actually, and you know this has a sky deck, a jacuzzi, a complete cinema, and an entertainment room. I would have also said 18. Get, go lower. Uh, go lower? Hmm. Ten and a half? Yeah, on the money. It's 10.5. Are you serious? It's ten and a half. That's insane. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can buy that tomorrow. <laughs> I had a really? Yes, I would have also I'm said like it. almost 20. <laughs> okay, next one. Let me give you the I area. The area of Benmore Gardens, definitely 10 and a half is that ah, price range. Yeah. Okay. This one is Dane Fern. Oh, so yeah, is, it, four is it within the estate? Is it within the... I'm not telling you. That's too many clues now. I'm not <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you go. Oh, wait, they're playing a piano. Okay. Here you go. Thank Dane you. Fern. Ah, oh, man. This is stunning. This is... <laughs> hmm. Oh, but that yard is not that big. Can I, can you tell me the square meters? Mm. <laughs> okay, fine. That's too much now. Um, <laughs> between 14 and 17. Between 14 and 17 mil. Yeah. For real. <laughs> I have a feeling. Let me give you a clue. Uh, Come lower. Let's go lower. Eight. Mm, very close. It's 9.5. Wow. Why would you have said uh, between 14 and si size? 
Dayton, if it's the if, area, if it's a square, if it's a thousand plus square meters, it's within Dayton Estate. Thank you so much. That was very close. I wish I had something, you know, nice to give you. <laughs> um, maybe next time you come, you'll get the property you guess correctly. We should just give you that home. That makes sense. Hey, yes. That makes. And if you get all three. You walk away with three hours. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm not Oprah. Um, but just to close off, um, you know, we, we heard a lot about you, uh, leaving a legacy, generational wealth, yeah. what success means to you. Yeah. And um, I think it's so empowering to hear these stories from people who are almost your age that have um, gone through certain things that yeah. that you've similarly, you some similar things that you've also gone through. So I love that you're inspiring people who are watching as well as myself. Mm -hmm. But just to close off this word, uh, we spoke about financial freedom. Yeah. How do you also plan on uh, obtaining those goals? Actually, let's do this. How do you plan on educating those younger than you on what you're doing and how to also leave generational wealth and legacies behind? How do I plan on educating, educating. the ones after me? Mm. So, um, so I've been very quiet. I've said no to a lot of interviews. I've said oh, no wow. to a lot of publications. Mm. And that's because I did not want the success to come with the fame. Oh. And, you know, I, I've, I, I'm learning now that this is not about me and how I feel. Mm. So, and that's why I'm here right now. Oh, wow. I feel like this is part of me educating and leaving behind, you know, just bits and pieces for somebody else to pick up and exactly. say, that makes sense. I should do that. That's my next step. Mm. And, you know, even on my platforms as well, people know that they can access me. They can call me. Yeah. I am always, always, always available to mm. chat. And sometimes I charge a consultation fee, but anyway. No, you must. How do we eat? Um, must, and girl. so basically, that's how that's how I plan on leaving, leaving. a legacy. I will have. Uh, so we've also expanded on Prestige Property Group. Mm -hmm. We have the Prestige Academia, and All we right. have the Real Estate University of South Africa underneath the firm for you to gain education from that. So mm. we will have accredited courses. We will have, you know, just people that you can talk to who are qualified, Right. you know, more than just me. Mm. I think it's so important for us to have mentors. Absolutely. And people who you can look up to and who are Absolutely. educating us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm actually, I didn't know that you were saying no to the press. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. I, thank you. Because your thank story you. means so much. It's, it's, changing, it's changing lives. It's changing so people who are watching. So thank you so much. Thank you. To our thank viewers at home, me. thank you so much. Take care. You know that we're live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We'll see you there. Take care.